John William Godward, 1861-1922, a John William Godward short biography. John William Godward, the 9th of August 1861 to the 13th of December 1922, was an English painter from the end of the Neoclassicist era. He was a protégé of Sir Lawrence Almitadema, but his style of painting fell out of favour with the rise of modern art. His painting, which remained virtually unchanged throughout his career, is characterized by meticulous drawing, almost photographic precision in the treatment of details, and bright, diaphanous coloring. It contains a series of iconographic elements taken from other authors of the time, such as the backgrounds by Almatadema, the treatment of the clothing by Frederick Layton, the simple compositions based on one or, at most, two figures by Albert Joseph Moore or the staging of Edward Pointer. Early Life of John William Godward Godward was born in 1861 and lived in Wilton Grove, Wimbledon. He was born to Sarah Eberle and John Godward, an investment clerk at the Law Life Assurance Society, London. He was the eldest of five children. He was named after his father John and grandfather William. He was christened at St. Mary's Church, Battersea on 17 October 1861. The overbearing attitude of his parents made him reclusive and shy later in adulthood. Career of John William Godward He exhibited at the Royal Academy from 1887. When he moved to Italy with one of his models in 1912, his family broke off all contact with him and even cut his image from family pictures. Godward returned to England in 1921, died in 1922, and is buried in Brompton Cemetery, West London. One of his best-known paintings is Dolce Farniente, 1904, which was purchased for the collection of Andrew Lloyd Webber in 1995. As in the case of several other paintings, Godward painted more than one version, in this case, an earlier, and less well-known, 1897 version with a further 1906 version. He committed suicide at the age of 61 and is said to have written in his suicide note that the world is not big enough for, both myself and a Picasso. John William Godwards was the son of John Godward, who worked at the Law Life Assurance Society in London. He received architecture training from William Horf Wonter, but he wanted to be an artist. His wealthy family strongly disapproved of this idea, but he decided to be a painter anyway and he became one of the best followers of Sir Lawrence Almatadema, painting beautiful women in classical surroundings with lots of marmore. He worked in London, where he lived in Wilton Grove, and from 1887 onwards he exhibited at the Royal Academy. He was reclusive and little is known about his life. From the blog My Daily Art Display blog at WordPress. Com reported this about his first visit to Italy in 1905. John William Godward made his first visit to Italy in 1905, a year after his father died. He travelled around visiting the islands of Ischia and Capri. He also journeyed around the Gulf of Naples and visited Sorrento and the historical site of Pompeii, the latter being one of his favourite places, during which time he painted many oil studies. Probably one of his best-known works of the time is a painting he completed in 1906 entitled Dolce Far Niente, Beauty Doing Nothing. Like most of his paintings there is no symbolic meaning or a connected narrative to it. We are just left to study this ageless place with its sumptuous luminous surfaces of veined marble. We absorb the dark red-coloured, classically inspired fabrics which adorn the body of the beautiful woman, who reclines against the lush textures of a leopard skin. Her long dark hair cascades over the marble stonework. She seems lost in thought and her eyes are languorously unfocused as if she is daydreaming. She is the epitome of relaxation. After his short stay in Italy he returned home but returned for a much longer stay setting off for Rome around May or June of 1912 and he remained in the country for 11 years. In 1912 he moved to Italy with one of his models and at this point his family broke off all contact, going as far as removing his image from family pictures. He lived in Rome from 1912 but in Italy his work was thought to be old-fashioned. Absence makes the heart grow fonder by John William Godward. 1912. From the blog My Daily Art Display blog at WordPress. Com reported this about some works of John William Godward.
Godwards completed his large canvas, measuring 131 x 80 cms, 51 by 32 inches. Absence makes the heart grow fonder in 1912 and this was looked upon as the start of his Roman period. It is a beautiful painting which oozes with charm, beauty and innocent opulence which were familiar characteristics in Godwards' works. The lady looks thoughtful and sad and by the title we are to presume that her lover has left her and maybe the ship in the background alludes to the couple's parting. She is dressed in a plum-coloured tunic. Lying next to her on the marble seat is her fan. In the foreground, Godward has included a floral still life of irises. The flower symbolizes faith, wisdom, and cherished friendship. Another painting which incorporates a Roman beauty and a floral depiction was also painted in 1912 with the title The Tryst. It is thought that, as it is the same size as absence makes the heart grow fonder it could have been meant as a pendant piece with that work. This painting depicts a young Roman woman dressed in a pale yellow diaphanous tunic who is seated on a marble terrace waiting for her lover. She looks directly towards us, searching for a sign of her beloved. The Mediterranean sun blazes down on her and she has raised her hand to shade her eyes from the dazzling brightness. In the foreground, we see the still life element of the painting in the form of poppies of various colors and varieties and a colorful oleander bush which acts as a great contrast to the clear blue sky. There is probably little symbolism in their inclusion as Godward's classical paintings centered on decorative beauty rather than tales of mythology and any narrative, which one gained from viewing the work, was probably in the observer's mind rather than that of the artist. Godward's works were all about pleasure. Beautifully adorned women in charming sunny settings overlooking the blue Mediterranean Sea, pristine marble surrounded by colorful flowers. They all made for the perfect idol. In 1919 he returned to England, but there his work wasn't appreciated anymore either. This was probably the reason for a deep depression resulting in suicide by putting his head in a gas oven. It was said that he left a suicide note that said that the world wasn't big enough for both him and a Picasso. After his death his family burned his papers and as far as known no photograph of himself survived. After his father died in 1904 he had bought a grave for him at Brompton Cemetery and there he was buried as well, not far from the painters Frederick Sandys, James Godwin and Val Princep. His estranged family, who had disapproved of his becoming an artist, were ashamed of his suicide and burned his papers. Cause of death suicide by gas inhalation. Only one photograph of Godward is known to survive. Works of John William Godward. Godward was a Victorian neoclassicist, and therefore, in theory, a follower of Frederick Leighton. However, he is more closely allied stylistically to Sir Lawrence Almitadema, with whom he shared a penchant for the rendering of classical architecture, in particular, static landscape features constructed from marble. The vast majority of Godward's extant images feature women in classical dress posed against landscape features, although there are some semi-nude and fully nude figures included in his oeuvre, a notable example being in the Tepidarium, 1913, a title shared with a controversial Almatadema painting of the same subject that resides in the Lady Lever Art Gallery. The titles reflect Godward's source of inspiration, classical civilization, most notably that of ancient Rome, again, a subject binding Godward closely to Almatadema artistically. Given that classical scholarship was more widespread among the potential audience for his paintings during his lifetime than in the present day, meticulous research of detail was important in order to attain a standing as an artist in this genre. Almatadema was an archaeologist as well as a painter, who attended historical sites and collected artifacts he later used in his paintings. Godward, too, studied such details as architecture and dress, in order to ensure that his works bore the stamp of authenticity. In addition, Godward painstakingly and meticulously rendered other important features in his paintings, Animal Skins, The Painting's Noonday Rest, 1910, and A Cool Retreat, 1910, contains examples of such rendition, and Wildflowers, Nerissa, 1906, and Summer Flowers, 1903, are again examples of this. The appearance of beautiful women in studied poses in so many of Godward's canvases causes many newcomers to his works to categorize him mistakenly as being pre-Raphaelite, particularly as his palette is often a vibrantly colorful one. 
The choice of subject matter, ancient civilization versus, for example, Arthurian legend, is more properly that of the Victorian neoclassicist. In common with numerous painters contemporary with him, Godward was a high Victorian dreamer, producing images of an idealized and romanticized world that, in the case of both Godward and Almatadema, came to be criticized as a worldview of Victorians in togas. Godward quickly established a reputation for his paintings of young women in a classical setting and his ability to convey with sensitivity and technical mastery the feel of contrasting textures, flesh, marble, fur and fabrics. Godward's pension for creating works of art set in the classical period probably came from the time period in which he was born. The last full-scale classical revival in Western painting bloomed in England in the 1860s and flowered there for the next three decades. Gallery of John William Godward's Works